According to research, over 90% of species of animals have become extinct since the beginning of life on Earth. But evidence suggests that some of these extinct animals may still be with us till today. There have been sightings of animals which are said to be extinct thousands or millions of years ago, and many of them have even been caught on very convincing, and at the same time, hard to believe videos. Today, we are going to take a look at 15 animals many believe to have gone extinct but are still alive to this day. Number 15. Cuban Selenodon Today only two species of Selenodon exist, the Hispaniolan Selenodon and Cuban Selenodon, standing out as some of the most extraordinary mammals in terms of evolutionary history. The Cuban Selenodon, also known as Almiqui, is a captivating nocturnal mammal with a lineage dating back over 76 million years, making it one of the oldest mammals known to us. Remarkably unchanged over millennia, this tiny creature possesses a surprising feature, venomous saliva delivered to prey through specialized grooves in its bottom incisors. These unique creatures are the last survivors of a diverse group of ancient insect-eating animals that once inhabited the Caribbean alongside dinosaurs during the Cretaceous period. Their existence offers valuable insights into the evolution and physical traits of ancient mammals. Selenodons prefer to remain hidden during daylight, taking refuge in rock clefts, hollow trees, or burrows they dig themselves. Social by nature, they often share burrows and communicate using various sounds like chirps, squeaks, and clicks. When selenodons encounter each other, they emit high-frequency clicks and may gently close their mouths over each other's snouts. One intriguing aspect of selenodons is their unique method of hunting, injecting venom with their grooved lower incisors. This enables them to prey not only on insects, but also on frogs, small reptiles, and even some rodents. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, sightings of the Cuban selenodon declined, raising concerns about its extinction due to habitat loss and invasive species like mongooses and rats. However, in the 1970s, the elusive creature was rediscovered in the remote forests of eastern Cuba, sparking renewed interest and leading to further research and conservation efforts. Despite this rediscovery, the Cuban selenodon faces modern challenges such as deforestation, habitat fragmentation, and invasive species. Conservationists are working tirelessly to study and protect this ancient mammal, aiming to ensure a future where it thrives in its natural habitat across the Caribbean islands. Number 14. Woolly Mammoth Woolly mammoths are believed to have become extinct around 10,000 years ago, no thanks to climate change. Many people still believe they exist today, supported by numerous sightings and fossil discoveries. There are still vast unexplored regions in Siberia where woolly mammoths could potentially be found, scientifically speaking. The woolly mammoth lived in steppe tundra habitat, also called mammoth steppe, an ecosystem made up of low shrubs, sedges, and grasses, which was widespread across Eurasia and North America during the Pleistocene. But there is some evidence that some populations also inhabited forests of the present-day Midwestern United States. The woolly mammoth was herbivorous, consuming the stems and leaves of tundra plants and shrubs. Woolly mammoths are massive, furry elephants with impressive tusks, famous for their immense size and weight. Standing at over 11 feet tall and weighing 7 tons, they were as heavy as four medium-sized elephants. Surprisingly, woolly mammoths became extinct much earlier than previously believed. Extinct on the mainland for 10,000 years, but still thriving on Wrangell Island in the Arctic Ocean just 4,000 years ago. Scientific evidence suggests that small populations of woolly mammoths may have survived in mainland North America until between 10,500 and 7,600 years ago. Other evidence suggests that woolly mammoths persisted until 5,600 years ago on St. Paul Island, Alaska, in the Bering Sea, and as late as 4,300 years ago on Wrangell Island, an Arctic island located off the coast of northern Russia, before succumbing to extinction from inbreeding and loss of genetic diversity. Back in 2012, there was a sighting of a woolly mammoth. An animal was spotted strolling along a Siberian river. The individual recording the video chose to keep a safe distance to avoid startling the animal and ensure their own safety. It was suggested that this might be an elephant, but there are no wild elephants in Siberia. 
Frozen woolly mammoths have been discovered as recently as 1948. Do you believe there might still be some living in Siberia today? Number 13. Lord Howe Island Stick Insect Only 20 to 30 individuals of the remarkable tree lobsters remain in their natural habitat. Rediscovered in 2001, this population of insects once thought extinct has flourished after 80 years of absence. These insects have robust bodies, with females sporting a wide abdomen tapering into a noticeable ovipositor, while males are slimmer but possess longer, thicker antennae and stronger hind legs with distinct spines. Young Lord Howe Island stick insects, known as nymphs, exhibit a vibrant green hue in their early stages and are active during daylight hours. As they mature, their color transitions to a more earthy green-brown, prompting them to seek shelter during the day. Fully grown, they have a sleek, shiny brown-black appearance and primarily feed on plants such as melaleuca and fig during the night. Initially known as tree lobsters for their large size and sturdy exoskeletons, the Lord Howe Island stick insects led a peaceful existence, feeding on leaves and moving gracefully at night. However, their tranquility was disrupted in 1918 when the SS Macambo shipwreck brought black rats to the island, which preyed upon the stick insects due to their size and slow movement. This led to a rapid decline in the stick insect population, with no sightings reported since 1920, resulting in their official declaration of extinction in 1986. Remarkably, reports of stick insect-like creatures on Ball's Pyramid a challenging volcanic formation southeast of Lord Howe Island, surfaced in 2001. A rescue team successfully retrieved two breeding pairs from the island in 2003, despite the rough seas preventing a direct landing. Upon exploration, they discovered a small group of stick insects thriving in a melaleuca bush, sheltered from predatory rats by the remote and rugged terrain. Conservation efforts swiftly followed, with two stick insects brought to the Melbourne Zoo to initiate a breeding program. Thanks to their dedicated work, the zoo soon boasted a lively community of these prehistoric insects. This rediscovery underscores the profound impact humans can have on the environment, both negatively and positively. With ongoing initiatives to reintroduce the Lord Howe Island stick insect to its native habitat and eradicate invasive rat populations, there is hope for the continued survival of this extraordinary species. Num 12. Baiji. There has been speculation about the Baiji dolphin being extinct, but recent findings suggest that this unique animal might have made a comeback in its native habitat, the Yangtze River in China. These dolphins were once abundant, but unfortunately, their population declined after the construction of the Three Gorges Dam. Humans at it again, huh? That was the general consensus among people. According to Chinese environmental scientists, this animal was declared extinct in 2006. Just a year later, in 2007, one of these animals was caught on video. This animal was captured on camera swimming in the Yangtze River by a Chinese man. Scientists and experts on Baiji confirmed that this sighting was indeed real and authentic. As a result, a large expedition was launched to search for additional resources. Researchers journeyed over 2,200 miles, but unfortunately, they could not sight another Baiji. They barely scratched the surface of the vast Yangtze River. It suggests that the species is probably still roaming around somewhere. Will humans have the chance to see them again before they disappear completely? Number 11. Coelacanth The Coelacanth's rediscovery stands as an enthralling chapter in natural history, reshaping our understanding of ancient marine life. These fish, renowned for their lobed fins and distinctive appearance, were long considered relics of a bygone era. With a fossil record spanning over 360 million years, they were believed to have vanished around 65 million years ago, coinciding with the disappearance of dinosaurs. Thus, the scientific consensus leaned toward their extinction. In 1938, the narrative took a remarkable turn when Marjorie Courtenay Latimer, curator of a local museum in South Africa, stumbled upon a living coelacanth near the Chalumna River mouth. Intrigued by its unique features, she sought confirmation from renowned ichthyologist James Leonard Brierly Smith, who verified its identity. The fish was aptly named Latimeria chalumnae in honor of Latimer and the river of its discovery. 
The discovery of the coelacanth was akin to encountering a living dinosaur, profoundly impacting the scientific community. This ancient creature, dubbed a living fossil, offered unparalleled insights into vertebrate evolution. Its lobed fins, reminiscent of primitive limbs, hint at a potential link between aquatic animals and the first terrestrial creatures. The coelacanth's graceful swimming style, with gentle body undulations, evokes images of ancient marine life. Since its rediscovery, additional coelacanths have been found in various regions, notably around the Comoros Islands and off Sulawesi, Indonesia. Yet they remain elusive denizens of the deep, often inhabiting dark underwater caves. Two known species of coelacanths exist today, residing near the Comoros Islands and Sulawesi. Some scientists speculate that their distinctive features mark a pivotal stage in the transition from fish to land-dwelling tetrapods. These mysterious creatures dwell in the ocean depths, reaching depths of up to 2,300 feet, and can grow over 6.5 feet long, weighing up to 198 pounds. With estimated lifespans of up to 60 years, their nocturnal habitat presents challenges that add to their enigmatic allure. Noteworthy features include a hinged skull joint facilitating mouth expansion for larger prey, an oil-filled notochord acting as a backbone, dense scales found only in extinct fish, and an electrosensory rostral organ possibly aiding in prey detection. Once considered extinct, the coelacanth now serves as a captivating link between ancient eras and modern times, showcasing the marvels and enigmas of the natural world. Number 10. Takahe with its remarkable evolutionary background, New Zealand has introduced the world to some truly captivating bird species. The takahe is a striking, flightless bird adorned with vibrant blue and green feathers. Once thought to be lost forever, by the early 20th century, the takahe was deemed extinct, a heartbreaking result of introduced predators and habitat alterations. Nature had a unique story waiting to unfold. On a side note, do you think they are simply chubby pukiko? Absolutely not. While they may resemble the pukiko purple swamp hen, takahe stand out for their larger size and vibrant colors compared to their distant relatives. Takahe typically weigh around 2.3 to 3.8 kg. Takahe are easily recognizable by their sturdy red legs and a robust red beak. Imagine a stunning array of colors on these birds, from a deep royal blue on their head and neck to vibrant peacock blue on their shoulders, transitioning into mesmerizing shades of turquoise and olive green on their wings and back. These creatures possess wings, which they flaunt during courtship rituals or to assert dominance. Takahe breed annually, caring for one to two chicks. Each pair will vigorously protect their territories. For families to thrive, they require ample space, typically between four to a hundred hectares, which can vary based on the food resource's abundance and quality. Takahe have a lifespan of 16 to 18 years in the wild and can live up to 20 to 22 years at sanctuary sites. Takahe can be found roaming in their natural habitat of native grasslands. These animals primarily feast on the starchy leaf bases of tussock and sedge species, occasionally indulging in tussock seeds when they're around. When the snow cover gets thick, these animals will head to the forest and focus on munching on the underground rhizomes of the summer green fern. Takahi face their biggest threat from mammalian predators. Back in 2007, a significant event occurred that drastically reduced the number of Takahe in the Murchison Mountains, a stoat plague. Deer enjoy feasting on the same tussock species that Takahe prefer. Regrettably, this can hinder tussock growth which in turn affects the food and habitat of Takahe. Back in 1948, Dr. Jeffrey Orbell made an astonishing rediscovery in the rugged Murchison Mountains of Fiordland, stumbling upon a small population of Takahe. This discovery sent shockwaves through the scientific world, prompting swift action to protect the species. These initiatives have contributed to an increase in the Takahe population, although they remain at risk. Number 9. The Pinocchio Lizard Upon first sight, the Ecuadorian horned anole, also known as the Pinocchio lizard, immediately captures attention with its unique appearance. Just take a glance at a male specimen, and you'll quickly understand why. Back in the 1950s, when anoles were first discovered, 
scientists could only find male ones. This made it impossible to determine if the females also had that impressive nose, and in just 10 years, they had all disappeared without a trace. It's likely that their disappearance was due to deforestation, as these anoles were limited to a small area of forest near Mindo village. In 2005, a group of bird watchers passing through the area spotted a lone, peculiar lizard making its way along a road. After capturing it and taking some pictures, they were able to identify it as the long-lost Ecuadorian horned anole. Years later, scientists collected specimens for research purposes. They had to go at night because the anoles are expertly camouflaged during the day, preferring to perch high in trees and move stealthily. However, at night, their colors transform, becoming pale enough for flashlights to easily spot them among the foliage. It's still unclear why they engage in this behavior, but it does offer some convenience. Despite being aware of their existence, researchers have limited knowledge about these lizards. They have the ability to wiggle their proboscis, but scientists are still unsure about the exact mechanism. It's possible that they have muscles in their snouts, which sets them apart from other lizards. Perhaps their bodies circulate fluid in and out of them. Researchers are quite confident that the proboscis is primarily used for mating displays rather than for fighting other males. One reason is their flimsiness, which would not make for good nose swords. Additionally, males have been seen waving them around before mating. It's uncertain how many Ecuadorian horned anoles exist, but their sightings are so rare that they are classified as an endangered species. Let's work on preserving them and their habitat to gather the answers we need. Number 8. Frilled Shark It was once thought that this type of shark had disappeared, but in 2007, frilled sharks were found near Japan. They are typically located in Saruga Bay, Japan. When underwater, their appearance can be quite frightening, resembling a combination of an eel and a shark. These creatures are typically about 2 meters long and are recognized for their deep brown hue. Their name comes from having six pairs of gill slits. The frilled shark's eyes shine in the dark, but the most frightening aspect of this creature is its teeth. The frilled shark boasts an impressive 300 trident-shaped teeth arranged in 25 rows, with a mouth size larger than most sharks. Frilled sharks are known for being active predators that can suddenly attack their prey, swallowing them whole, regardless of their size. Their usual way of swimming resembles that of an eel, moving in a serpentine manner. The frilled shark loves to eat squid and has multiple rows of long teeth with three points each, ideal for catching the soft bodies of its prey. Frilled sharks primarily feed on squids, but they also consume a wide range of fish species and even other sharks. Encountering frilled sharks in the wild is quite rare, which limits our knowledge of their ecology. Scientists have limited information obtained from dissecting individuals caught in deep-sea net fisheries and observing live individuals in captivity. Frilled sharks mate internally and give birth to live offspring. Yet they do not have a placenta to connect with their offspring, unlike many other mammals. Embryos rely on energy from yolk sacs until they can survive independently, at which point the mother gives birth to her young. These sharks are at a high risk of extinction, with very few remaining worldwide. Given their long-standing presence, it's truly an impressive accomplishment. They are often referred to as living fossils due to their long existence and population. Guess what the number is? There are 80 million of them living on our planet. This species is here to stay. Number 7. Ivory-Billed Woodpecker Behold the magnificent ivory-billed woodpecker, the largest of its kind in North America and the third largest globally. This majestic bird once graced the old-growth forests of the southeastern United States and Cuba. The lush forests of the southeastern United States echo with the unique double-knock sound of the ivory-billed woodpecker, a remarkable bird celebrated for its impressive size and stunning plumage. In the mid-20th century, due to extensive logging and habitat destruction, there was a widespread belief that this magnificent bird had gone extinct. The 21st century brought a renewed sense of hope for its existence. There have been scattered sightings of the woodpecker, sparking debates about its continued existence. Videos with poor quality and sound recordings from locations such as Arkansas's Big Woods 
stirred up both enthusiasm and debate. In 2004, the bird was rediscovered in the Big Woods region of eastern Arkansas, but unfortunately, it has not been spotted again since then. The recent sightings of the ivory-billed woodpecker are powerful symbols of nature's resilience in the face of human-caused obstacles. Debates surrounding the bird's presence have sparked a fresh wave of conservation initiatives in its traditional habitats. Number 6. Nautilus. Would you believe this creature really exists? It looks like it was brought out from an anime. This creature is a mollusk and is part of the Nautilidae family. These creatures have been roaming the Earth for over 500 million years. The name Sailor is derived from its exceptional swimming abilities. It thrives in the depths of the ocean, reaching incredible depths. The animal lives in the largest chamber of the shell, with the other chambers operating similar to the ballast tanks of a submarine. Here's the secret behind how the Nautilus swims. This benefit is that it prevents predators from reaching them. This is one of the reasons they have managed to thrive on Earth for such a long time. Fossil records indicate that creatures resembling the chambered Nautilus have been around for approximately 500 million years. Despite the lack of protective regulations, the six living species of chambered Nautilus seem to be decreasing in numbers. Mostly trapped for their beautiful shells and the inner layer, called nacre, which is often used as a substitute for pearls in jewelry and trinkets. These fascinating creatures inhabit tropical waters worldwide. These waters encompass Fiji, Oman, and the Great Barrier Reef. Similar to the frilled shark, nautiluses are also known as living fossils. Hey guys, before we continue, it's time for our subscribers pick. In the photo displayed right on your screen, you can see a bunch of animals that are believed to be extinct. We have a Tasmanian tiger, also known as thylacine, at the top left section, and a giant gorilla that is almost twice the height of an average human at the top right. At the bottom right, we have a giant sloth. Do you think this species of sloth would be much more agile and faster than the ones we know? Okay, now the last animal at the bottom left is for you guys to decide. What do you think the fourth animal is? And do you believe all of these four are still alive today? Comment your thoughts in the comment section below. Number 5. Bush Dog The Bush Dog is a small, stout carnivore belonging to the Canidae family, commonly found in the forests and savannas of Central and South America. The Bush Dogs are truly unique canines found in the world. These animals are quite social and typically form groups of up to 12 individuals. Living in regions with limited visibility, these dogs excel at communication and produce a variety of sounds. How interesting. The bush dog is the only living species in its genus, with the maned wolf believed to be its closest living relative. Despite their small size, these dogs can tackle prey much larger than themselves. These predators enjoy a diverse diet that includes pacas, capybaras, agoutis, and even tapirs found in South America. These dogs excel in the water, being skilled swimmers and divers with partially webbed feet to aid in swimming. Peter Wilhelm Lund first discovered the species in a Brazilian cave, initially thought to be an extinct animal. Several decades later, bush dogs were discovered in Central and South America, with some even spotted as far north as Costa Rica. Even with such a large living space, this dog can be challenging to find in the wild because they tend to choose areas with minimal visibility. Currently, they are classified as near-threatened due to the destruction of their natural habitats. If you ever wanted to find one, you'll have no trouble spotting them in zoos. Despite being previously believed to be extinct, these dogs never truly disappeared. Number 4. Monoplacophorans Monoplacophorans, a type of mollusk believed to have vanished around 400 million years ago. In 1952, 10 live specimens were collected from the seafloor near Costa Rica, more than 3,500 meters below the surface. Researchers later discovered that monoplacophorans had been previously identified as far back as 1869. However, they were all mistakenly classified as limpets, a type of snail, due to their similar shape. Today, we've discovered approximately 30 unique species, all of which belong to the subcategory Triblidia. Monoplacophorans are characterized by their cap-like shell consisting of only one plate. Their shell microstructure and musculature closely resemble those discovered in fossils dating back half a billion years. 
there is still much to learn about them, such as their growth, reproduction, and their communication and relationship with other mollusks, which remain a significant mystery. These creatures were once thought to be the original mollusk, from which all others descended due to their simplicity. They exhibit signs of segmented organs, which led to the consideration of being a potential missing link between all mollusks and annelids, or segmented worms. Chances are, they are neither of those things. Recent research indicates that rather than being the original mollusk, they are a highly specialized offshoot of the mollusk family tree. As our understanding grows, the complexity of the tree continues to increase. Number 3. Chacoan Peccary The Chacoan Peccary was known as one of the largest mammals in South America. The Chacoan Peccary is native to the South American countries of Paraguay, Bolivia, and southern Brazil. Discoveries in the 1930s were made possible by the findings of fossils. It was believed that they had disappeared, leading to their classification as extinct. However, in the 1970s, a zoologist made a discovery. Chacoan peccaries are often referred to as pigs from green hell due to their untamed and impenetrable habitats. The Chacoan peccary thrives in hot, dry regions that remain unspoiled and untouched by human activity. The Gran Chaco spans around 140,000 square kilometers and is characterized by low-lying succulents and thorny bushes. While there are some scattered giant trees, the majority of the vegetation consists of thorny scrub vegetation. Adaptations such as well-developed sinuses have evolved to cope with dry, dusty conditions. Due to their habitat, Chacoan peccaries are seldom spotted by humans. Walking through thorny plants in the jungle has led to the development of very thick skin over many years. These days they remain quite rare, and you'll likely never come across one unless you actively seek it out. They continue to reside in Paraguay, Bolivia, and Argentina. Number 2. Neptune's Cup Sponge Discovered around 1820 off the coast of Singapore, Neptune's Cup Sponge was rapidly harvested to extinction. But as it turned out, these sponges grew to over a meter tall and wide, with a cup-like shape so convenient that people used them as bathtubs for their babies. Due to their impressive size, they became highly sought after by collectors and museums, leading to continuous harvesting until their population dwindled significantly. In 1907, the last recorded sighting of this creature was recorded. However, in 2011, scientists found two living specimens in the waters near Singapore's St. John's Island. In the 1990s, dead sponges were found washed up on shore in Australia, providing evidence that they were not extinct. It took more than 10 years to locate these live ones. These two sponges were quite young, measuring only about 30 centimeters in diameter, which is far from their maximum size potential. They taught us that these sponges actually grow faster than we previously believed. These two young sponges showed impressive growth, increasing in size by several centimeters in just a few months. This growth rate is quite remarkable when compared to other sponge species, which typically take a year to achieve the same amount of growth. Recently, three additional live sponges have been found and relocated to facilitate their reproduction and conservation. We won't be using them for baby baths anytime soon, that's for sure. So creepy. Number 1. Mallorcan Midwife Toad In 1977, the initial fossils of the Mallorcan Midwife Toad were discovered on the beautiful island of Mallorca in the Mediterranean. Researchers believed the species had gone extinct a few thousand years ago due to the introduction of predatory snakes by the Romans, based on the fossils found. However, just three years later, we discovered live ones. Their name comes from how the males care for fertilized eggs by carrying a string of 7 to 12 of them wrapped around their hind legs until they hatch. Think of it as a tiny tadpole fanny pack. These small toads reach a maximum length of 4 centimeters and were once widespread across Mallorca. Invasive species have forced them to retreat to the northern mountains, seeking refuge in the small streams etched into the limestone. Fortunately, breeding programs have been active in Europe since the mid-1980s, with the first toads bred in captivity reintroduced to the island in 1989. These conservation efforts have proven to be successful, leading to the reclassification of the toads in 2004 from critically endangered to vulnerable. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.